Hello and welcome to Evidence for Arguments and How to Find It. I'm Dr. Rick Merritt. We've discussed reasoning in another video. Reasoning in an argument is important. However, without evidence, reasoning on its own may not carry the day. In this video, we will look at the types of evidence. We'll also look at how to find evidence in the library. Let's take a basic argument using the model we first saw in the Argument Basics video. This argument deals with mindset and how it can help you succeed in college. In this graphic, we see a fact where Jane has a growth mindset, and this should lead to success in college, and the warrant that describes the concept of the growth mindset. The backing is from Eduardo Brisenio's TED Talk. This is a statement from an expert in the field of mindset and is our evidence for the argument. We will explore facts, statistics, testimony, and examples that can be used as evidence in your arguments. We'll also take a look at how to find them. What is a fact? Let's take a look at some famous quotes about facts. Arthur Conan Doyle stated, there is nothing more deceptive than an obvious fact meaning be careful with facts because they may not be as they seem. Albert Einstein said, if the facts don't fit the theory, change the facts. Here's an interesting point of view from Dorothy L. Sayers. Facts are like cows. If you look at them in the face long enough, they generally run away. Finally, from our second president, John Adams, facts are stubborn things, and whatever may be our wishes, our inclinations, or the dictates of our passion, they cannot alter the state of facts and evidence. Adams did tend to be a little verbose. Armed with these quotes, let's see how we can use a fact in an argument. A fact is something that cannot be disputed. The earth revolves around the sun. And that's a fact. This is the national flag of Kenya. We could argue that the flag of Kenya adequately represents the people and lands of Kenya. We can find evidence about the flag from the CIA fact book. From the fact book, it states, the black symbolizes the majority population. The red, the blood shed in the struggle for freedom. The green stands for natural wealth and the white for peace. The shield and cross spears symbolize the defense of freedom. These are the facts about the flag. When we can apply those facts to determine if the flag does indeed represent Kenya. Facts cannot be disputed. However, as we have seen, they can be interpreted. There may be other interpretations of the colors of the Kenyan flag, but I could not find them. Thus, a fact is something that is not in dispute. It is something that's readily available for anyone to find. Now let's move on to statistics. Mark Twain links us from facts to statistics by noting facts are stubborn things, but statistics are pliable. Benjamin Disraeli opined, there are three types of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. Finally, from Cato Loam, whenever I read statistical reports, I try to imagine my unfortunate contemporary, the average person who, according to these reports, has 0.66 children, 0.032 cars, and 0.046 TVs. As you can see from the quotes, there is a little more disdain for statistics. However, they can be strong evidence for an argument when obtained from the proper source. Let's take smoking as an important health issue. These statistics from the CDC shows that in 2010, one in five people smoked, and only 8% smoked more than 30 cigarettes per day. The telling statistic is that half of the adults who continue to smoke will die from smoking-related causes. Looking further, we can note there are 58 million people exposed to secondhand smoke. Now let's carry the argument about smoking over to the discussion about testimony. Testimony usually comes from experts in the field or someone with first-hand experience, such as an eyewitness to an event. For example, we're going to cite the U.S. Surgeon General's report to discuss the hazards of smoking. Secondhand smoke contains a number of poisonous gases and chemicals including hydrogen cyanide using chemical weapons, carbon monoxide found in car exhaust, butane used in lighter fluid, ammonia used in household cleaners, and toluene found in paint thinners. 
Further, the report notes, secondhand smoke has been designated as a known human carcinogen, a cancer-causing agent, by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the National Toxicology Program, and the International Agency for Research on Cancer. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health has concluded that secondhand smoke is an occupational carcinogen. Finally, the report notes that children exposed to secondhand smoke are at increased risk for ear infections and are more likely to need an operation to insert ear tubes for drainage. Normally, you want to find multiple sources when you are using testimony. Examples are the last form of evidence. You can use personal examples in your speeches, but not in the debates. That's because in the debate, the opposing side cannot argue against your personal example as they have no experience with it. A personal example I could use in a speech on smoking may be that as a child both my parents smoked and I suffered from earaches for much of my childhood. Examples can be very powerful forms of evidence. Remember they can and should be used in your speeches but cannot be used in your debates. Where can you find evidence? Well, the library has all the resources you will need at your fingertips. Let's go there now. Here we are at the Northeast State homepage. To get to the library, select the student's drop-down menu and then library. You can access the library 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Note, if you are accessing from off-campus, you will be asked to enter your login information. Simply enter the same information you would for logging onto any Northeast State computer on campus. Once on the library website, we will select Online Databases from the right side of the blue menu ribbon. You will notice a plethora of databases, 111 at the time of this recording, but we're only going to look at two of them. They both can be found at the top of the page. The first is Gale Opposing Viewpoints in Context. When you click on this database, you will see a home page with a list of topics and some issues for each. However, we're going to browse issues. Here you see a list of alphabetical topics. We're going to select book banning. Once on the book banning page, you see several areas to select from. We're going to check out the article, Censorship Cannot Be Allowed in America. We click on it, the article comes up. You'll note there's an opportunity to listen to this article. As we scroll through the article, you will see terms that are highlighted, such as school libraries. When you click there, you'll find additional links to school libraries topics. At the bottom of the page, you will see further readings and how to cite the source in text. You will always verbally cite your source in a speech or debate. To go back to my library, scroll to the top and select the Northeast State Community College Library. Once again, we're going to select Online Databases, and this time we're going to go to the SIRS Knowledge Source. Here, you see the top 10 issues on the right-hand side of the page. We're going to click More Issues. Here, again, you see an alphabetical listing of many more issues. This time, we're going to look at electronic cigarettes. And here you're going to see at the top of the page a pro-con, again ideal for those who are debating, and then this we're going to see are e-cigarettes a healthy way to quit smoking. We're going to click on it and as with the opposing viewpoints you can listen to this article as well. As we scroll through the article you see both sides of the issue. This is great if you're uncertain as to which side you're going to be taking in a debate. Scrolling back up, you will see that you can quickly jump to the citation and the summary section. Remember, you are always going to cite your sources in your speeches and debates. The free databases at the library are much better options than simply entering a topic in a search engine and hoping for the best. That's it for your short trip to the Basler Library databases. 
That is a quick look at evidence, including facts, statistics, testimony, and examples, and how to find them. That brings us to the end of this session. I'm Dr. Rick Merritt. See you in class.